Yeah. Um, so the server side right now is you know work on uh, work on Linux only. Okay. But the, the Windows world we already start. We already have you know developers to porting it to Windows, so it will be available soon. And right now the client work on both Linux and Windows. Okay. Uh, this is very simple. Uh, we don't. The only library you need to run this image is, is OpenSSL. Uh, this is probably the library. You know, sometimes it's not available. You have to download, but uh, otherwise it doesn't require anything else. Um, so uh, I will take for maybe 20 minutes to explain how to install it. This is really the installation is really simple. I just uh, we have to go go over a few uh, steps. Um, so basically, after you download the code. Uh, this is some, this is some source code inside the the, the directory. Yeah. The source code. Uh, this is the configuration. Uh, you need to do some little bit configuration, and these tools you can uh, use access uh, the sector file system. You can also run some simple uh, data processing jobs, and uh, you can find you can find the sector documentation in this directory, and these are the programming header files. Uh, right now, it's only C++. Um, there are Java and the Python porting. Uh, it's still working on. Um, a security server, a make file, you can you make the system. And uh, these are programming examples. Right? And uh, these are libraries you can link. You, you need to link your, your application. And the slim node, a fuse. I'll, I'll explain fuse later. And the master server. Um, so basically, uh, there is also an online version of the documentation. You can you can find actually only everything I, I explained here from documentation, but uh, uh, it's a really simple process. And so right now the version the, the current version is 2.4. You download this, you know, enter that, and run make. Uh, just make sure you have open SSL, SSL and the G, G, GCC version uh, 3.4 above, and then you will be able to successfully compile it. Uh, then we will have RPM more and soon, so that makes it the process even simpler. Um, so after you compile it, the first thing you need to do is you know configure, right? Because sector doesn't know you know the IP address of your system, you know how many which, where your slave is located, and uh, and the user account and password, those stuff. Okay. Uh, so basically, there are three uh, configuration files. They are all located in this directory. Okay. Um, so, the master configuration file you, you need to configure. You know the, the port number. You know wi at which port the sector is linking. You know, and also where the security server is uh, uh, located, and um, and where do you want to store the metadata information of the sector system. And the slave node, is you, need, you, need, you need to tell each slave where the master node is located. And where do you want, which local storage path you want to store the data. Okay. Um, and also, the client side, you can, you can configure the master uh, node address. And uh, you can also pre-configure the account and the password. Or you can leave this uh, as blank. But when you run the sector client, they will ask, it will ask you to input the, pass the account and password. So it, it depends on you. Okay. Um, so, um, well, I also want to to to, to, to mention that you can actually because this is an all user space uh, system, you can run all of this in a single computer. You know, you don't need to have a one computer for master, another for slave. You can run all of them in one computer. You can even run multiple slaves on one computer. You just need to uh, specify the, the storage path separately. You know. Um, so, where does sector located this this configuring files? Basically, there's only one environmental variable, sector home. You can specify this, and the sector all the sector commands will find this configuration configuration information from this directory. And if you don't if you don't uh, specify this, I will you know assume that you run all the commands on the in the current directory, and we will find the configuration. Uh, it is uh, in the upper directory, and uh, when in the next version, when the RPM is available, you know we actually we we will install sector uh, at OPT directory. Um, so, uh, 
I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it's just very simple. This is just uh, one example of the configuring file. I just want to show you, the, you know, this is very straightforward. It doesn't require any, you know, prior knowledge to, to, to understand this. Basically, you just, for example, you just need to specify the, the port. You know, 6000 is the default, but you can specify another one. Uh, you can, uh, you need to, s to let the sector know where the security server is located. Okay. And uh, you, where you want to put the data on the local storage file system. And how many replicas you want sector to create, right? Because sector run on this commodity hardware, right? your file, you know, sometimes the node is done. You want replicas to make sure data is available uh, any time. So this is a system wide value. So basically, uh, for example, if you write two here, all the files will be replicated twice uh, in the sector system. But uh, you do can specify a profile value. For example, if you have a really important file you want to replicate for five times, you can do that. It's just a little more complicated configuration. Um, so you can do, again, there's a system default value, there's also a preferred, uh, profile or directory value we can do. Uh, so yeah, the rest is, again, is very straightforward. I just I'll give the example. So after you configure all of this, um, yeah, you just three step start the, start, uh, start the system. You know, you can first you start the security server, right? Um, by default, it's listening it's listening uh, at port five thousand, um, and then of course you you will be able to specify a, another different port um, as long as you specify this in uh, in the master configuration file, okay? And then sorry. Um, and then uh, you can use this command, start out to start the whole system, right? Although before you do that, you do, uh, actually the master will you know, use SSH to each slave to start the slave uh, server. This is similar, if you already work with Hadoop, you will find this is actually very similar to the Hadoop process. Hadoop uses similar things, the passwords free SSH. You have to do this. And uh, you just need to put all the slave address in this file and the master, master will automatically start all the slaves uh, in this, on this list. Um, so, and then if you want to shut down the system, you can do stop all. This is a brutal force uh, master basically just kill the slaves. So sometimes you, you want more reliability, you can do a grace, of course you can do a graceful shutdown. Uh, so, uh, Right now, this this is uh, not, it's not in uh, version 2.4. It's just it's only in the source code SVN, but uh, it will be released in the next version. <laughs> um, so you may want to check, you know, if your s installation is successful. So this is a command you can use. This is the first command you can use after you, you install the system, right? This is, you can use to this sector system info to check the information of the system. Um, this 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 command will display uh, the basic information like you know how many masters, how many slaves, you know the address of each master, the, the, the how many files are in the system, you know how many available disk space, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and uh, but if you don't see anything displayed or some kind of error message means something is wrong, uh, that's yeah probably you know give you more trouble to debug. But uh, basically. Uh, you can, in this, if that case happens, you can start the master and the slave individually. You can do start master and start slave. Um, so you can check the output of each master and each slave so you can see what's, what's wrong with them. Uh, so, yeah. So that's about the, uh, uh, that's the simple installation process, right? Um, and then, Sector, there is a, a bunch of sector client tools you can use to access the file system, right? Basically, it is very similar to the traditional file system. You can do a RS list. You can remove the file. You can uh, create a new directory. You can move file, c copy file. You know, everything you can do with a traditional file system, you can do to sector. Um, but there is a, of course, sector is it's not a traditional file system. It's not a standard file system. So there's two special command you, know, you can use. You can upload files from your local file system to sector. You can also download from sector to your local file system. So basically, if you run sector in a remote data center, you can you know 
you can download the sector data. It's basically like I said, it's kind of like advanced FTP server. In, you know, the FTP only run on, only run on a single, single node, but the sector will run on multiple data centers, right? So you don't need to care about, you don't need to, 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 to care about, to, to worry about where exactly your data is lo located. You just put it into a sector, a sector, take care of it, and you can download it. You know, even though, even if you're from a very remote area and we, we have a UDT protocol, you know, to make sure the data transfer is faster, is efficiently utilized, the high speed network you have. Um, so, if you think that, if you don't think that's convenient enough, there's another system, the module you can use is a, is a Fuse. Fuse is a very, uh, it's a simple, but it's really great, small library. Um, it's allow you to mount a sector uh, as, a, as, a, as a local file directory, a file system directory, right? So you go to the Fuse directory of the source code, you make it, uh, you can, and then you can use this command to mount the sector system, right? So basically, after you mount this, sector will become a local file system directory. And you can use all the standard system command to, pro to access files, the sector files in that directory. There's, no other, there's basically no difference. It's all the commands supported by the standard file system is, is also support, supported by sector. So you can use this uh, file system command to do that. You can also uh, use a standard IO library, you know, open, read, write, close to the sector files. So transparent. Um, and of course, you can also use the, 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 the native sector file system API uh, to do a application development, right? You, you need the tools, sometimes tools are not, not enough. You need to open a file to write your own uh, data. So basically, the process is very straightforward. You just need to, uh, for each sector application, you, do, you, you need to initialize the system. You know, you need to tell the system where the uh, the, uh, the IP address of the master node, right? So you need to log in and log out. But that's the only extra step to use the system. After you do this, then you can just use the, the very similar file system APIs. You can open a sector file, you can read it, write it, you know, seek. Uh, you can close, you can do start, you can uh, delete, uh, something like that. Um, and the sector allows you basically I only think except for concurrent write. So write is, if you write, a, write data to a file, that, that write is uh, ex exclusive. When you write to a file, the file will not be touched by other uh, clients. Um, that's the only difference between sector and other the, the standard file system. But only other operations you can do. Um, so the, this is some example use scenario for the sector file system, right? So it's a, an ex in 